Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much to Jace for writing us this review of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. If you enjoy the channel, maybe consider subscribing. And as always guys, remember we give away a free code each month. So the wait is most definitely over. And for many of you, you've already purchased the game. Now after a wait that felt like an eternity, Masahiro Sakurai's love letter to the gaming world has finally arrived, and I couldn't be more excited to share my thoughts with you guys. The last week my stomach has been in knots in anticipation, and I can't say i felt this way about a game since Wrath of the Lich King a decade ago. Man, Jace, I didn't know you were a uh, World of Warcraft nerd. Thank you so very much to Nintendo for the review code, and of course to Mark and Glenn to switch up for letting a scrub like me tackle this massive title. Could be worse, mate. You could be a massive scrub tackling a little title. Now, without further ado, let's dive in and find out if this latest iteration of Super Smash Bros. deserves the title Ultimate. Fair warning to the competitive purists out there, while I consider myself a massive fan of Super Smash Bros, I play the games for the fun party experience and not the online competitive, so if you're looking for a deep dive into statistics and percentages, you'll need to look elsewhere. Much to everyone's surprise, Super Smash Bros Ultimate actually does include a story mode, even though Sakurai himself said he wouldn't do it again after Subspace Emissary was leaked online ahead of the game's launch. World of Light, as the story is called, begins as Galim, Lord of Light, invades the Smash universe and captures each and every character save one. The lone fighter to escape is our beloved pink puffball Kirby, and he must fight his way through battle after battle to free his friends and save the world. While the story itself unfortunately never gets much deeper than the opening cutscene, World of Light provides an excellent and long-lasting solo play option and is a perfect introduction for newcomers to the series. As you move across the map, each encounter will use different rule sets that are surprisingly varied. Certain ones will also unlock characters for use in all modes, so you can easily switch to new fighters as you obtain them and get a feel for each and every one of the 74, yeah, 74 fighters. This mode also introduces players to another new feature in the Smash series, Spirits. The Spirits are extra, collectible characters from an absolutely insane number of different games and franchises, from the universally known like Charmander, to the downright obscure like the chef from the personal training cooking DS game. The Spirits can be equipped to your fighter to modify your stats or negate certain hazards, and can even be leveled up and evolved. Much like loot in any RPG, these spirits come with various rarities and power levels, and there are a ton to collect, just under 1,300 in total. What I love about the addition of spirits is that they can be used alongside any of the multiplayer modes and further provide ways to customise battles, which is exactly what the series is all about. Speaking of modes, there are an enormous number of ways to beat your friends or computer-controlled enemies into oblivion packed into this game. Want to play with giant sized characters? Go for it. Sudden death matches only? Why not? One of the best additions to the game in my opinion is the ability to create custom rule sets and save them for use across any of the modes. Gone are the days of starting up Smash and spending 5 minutes changing the default settings to your favourite way to play. Now it's just the click of a button. Another great feature is the built-in tournament mode, which accommodates up to 32 people and provides four different brackets with varying amounts of rounds to play through, so setting up a local tournament is a breeze. Other modes include, but are not limited to, a return of Classic, which sees you fighting a series of six battles and then a boss at the end, Smashdown mode, where the entire roster is played through and each character can only be chosen once, and Squad Strike, where you fight 3v3 or 5 vs 5 stock battles and each life is represented by a different character. Classic mode in particular is wonderful to see back in the series and it's even more revamped in a way that each character's path follows a theme. For instance, Link's theme is Sealing the Darkness and he fights dark versions of various characters before fighting Ganon as the final boss. What is shocking me right now as I put together this review is that I've already gone on forever about the game and yet I've barely touched the surface and not even mentioned yet how the game actually feels to play. 
Let's talk about that then. Super Smash Bros Ultimate feels like the gold standard of arcade fighters and a major step up from previous iterations. While fans of the series like myself will find plenty here that is familiar, a lot has been done to modify how battles play out. Damage and launch distance have been tuned in a way that combat feels much quicker, with it being rare to survive very long while over 100% damage. Each character has been revisited and tweaked, jumps feel less floaty and almost heavy. As a die-hard melee fan, I didn't think I'd ever like another Smash game as much as that one, but I absolutely love the direction they've taken Ultimate and so I think I can finally put melee to rest. For the uninitiated, the controls are incredibly simple and in combination with the customization mentioned before, it makes this game one of, if not the best pick up and play party games on the market. While each character feels vastly different, they all control the same. The joystick is used to move your fighter around the screen, the A and B button prompt attacks, the R button is used to grab and the triggers to dodge. At a high level, that's really all there is to it. The complexity comes with learning how each character attacks and some are more difficult than others to master, but at the end of the day, just about anybody can find a character they can succeed with. The simple controls are as tight and responsive as ever. While I strongly believe the GameCube controller is the best way to play, I did give the other controller options a go. The Pro Controller feels fine and is a solid option for someone not accustomed to the classic. I don't suggest the single Joy-Con setup whatsoever, but I find just about any game difficult to play in this way. Obviously I'm raving mad about this game, but to give it an honest and fair review I also need to report some negative aspects I've come across. First, I feel like launch distance is a little too much right now. It's very difficult to chain combos, which might have been the point, but certain characters have moves that become almost useless as it stands right now. The best example of this is probably Marth's side B 4 hit combo. On the third hit, even at low damage, your enemy will fly out of range of the fourth and strongest swing, leaving you to miss completely. Second, while I appreciate the option to play this way, eight player battles on small stages make it next to impossible to follow your characters around the screen, with so many effects going off and characters flying around. The last gripe I'll mention, and this is the big one, is online play. During my time reviewing the game, I was able to jump into a few online matches, but latency became an issue. In one battle, I froze completely for over 20 seconds before the fight continued. Now, these issues might have been amplified by the fact that I was playing in the US, where the game had not been released yet, meaning I was likely matching up against people from across the world. Hopefully, it will be resolved as more people start playing online, and Nintendo have stated the system will attempt to match you with players nearby. In any case, my initial online experience was not stellar, and that could be a huge hindrance to the longevity of the game if it persists. Now, had the game launched with the fixes I mentioned, then gameplay would receive 19 out of 20, but as it stands right now, these are big issues. So while an incredibly fun game, gameplay still scores 18 out of 20. And the ever amazing controls score 19 out of 20. In terms of visuals and performance, all I can really say is that I wish every game ran this well and looked this good. Even with eight players on a stage with hazards everywhere, bombs going off, Pokemon and assist trophies wreaking havoc left and right, not once did I experience a frame drop or slow down. Given how I've seen other games chug to a stop with too many effects on screen, it is mind-blowing how well Smash is handled. I love the little details and care thrown into every character, stage and item. One of my early favourites in this version has been Link, and small things like his Master Sword glowing during strong attacks add that extra flair that sets it apart. Even the stages resurrected from the original Super Smash Bros on the N64 have a look to them where you can tell they've been updated and enhanced, and yet they somehow look like they haven't changed at all. I like to think that these levels in particular now look how my nostalgia filled brain remembers them always looking, and seeing them makes me feel like a little kid again. The only complaint I have is along the same lines as my gameplay issue earlier, which is just that sometimes there are too many things going on at once. My poor eyes sometimes lost track of my character completely in all the mayhem. This is a tiny gripe to be sure, but should be mentioned anyway. Visuals and performance score 19 out of 20.
some people have commented that Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is actually just a $60 soundtrack with a game attached. And to be honest, that's not too far from the truth. From the moment you first boot up the game, you have access to over 700 video game tracks, amounting to over 24 hours of music, including original classics, modern remixes, and everything in between. Even more can be unlocked as you play. Built right into the game is the option to create playlists, choose how much any given track plays on each individual stage, and even continue music playback while the Switch is in sleep mode making it a veritable MP3 player. The sound effects while in combat are just as memorable and beautifully arcadey. As a fan of video games in general, I could recommend buying this game at full price simply for the soundtrack alone. With that in mind, there's no way I can give audio a score of anything less than a full 20 out of 20. It's not going to shock anybody that the most highly anticipated first party Nintendo game of the year is selling for a full AAA price, with 74 characters to unlock a 30 plus hour story mode, nearly 1,300 spirits to collect, and the largest video game soundtrack in history, this game would be unbelievable value for money, even before you consider any of the multiplayer modes, adding countless ways to customise how you play and simple controls that will allow anyone to jump in and have fun, this game will easily suck hundreds or even thousands of hours from many people. Now I know I'll be living and breathing this game for a long time to come. Adding even more to the value is the fact that if you purchase the game before January the 31st, you will also be given the first DLC character, the Piranha Plant from Super Mario, for free. Additionally, purchase the digital version before December 9th and you'll grab double the gold points for use towards a future game purchase. For physical buyers, remember to claim your gold points and register your game before January 31st which is the Piranha Plant deadline. Now, while I'd love to give full points for value based on everything I've just said, Nintendo's forced my hand and I have to knock a couple of points off because they didn't adjust the pricing for my friends overseas. Nintendo of all companies should recognize and account for the exchange rates, but for some reason they've kept the price at £59.99 and €69.99, which is a major markup compared to the price here in the US. Value scores 18 out of 20. To conclude, Super Smash Bros Ultimate far exceeds my expectations in every single way and is without a doubt the greatest game in the series. What Sakurai and his team have accomplished here is extraordinary. I read that immediately following the tournament at this year's E3, he jumped on a plane to go back to work because he saw things he didn't like about the game. He worked himself to death trying to create something that would please every single one of his avid fans and while that's of course impossible, I'm guessing he's satisfied most. And he's won the heart of this particular fan, that's for sure. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate receives an overall switch-up score of 94%. Glenn and I can't thank Jace enough for the time and effort he's put into getting this review out today. Okay, so that's incredible. Thanks so much, I apologise wholeheartedly to your wife and family. And as always, for all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys! See ya!